your best luxury of life was your poverty. I am sure you were inspired and motivated that with the poverty that you faced. And uh, how have you channelized that to the mountainous growth that you have achieved? I think uh, I have been telling uh, luxury of poverty. You all must be thinking luxury is different, poverty is different. But actually luxury of poverty. Success in life is a delta. Delta is x2 minus x1. x2 is where you are today, x1 is where you were that day. And if x1 was zero, will you ever lose? Lucky are those who are born to poor. And if people say that, you know, my father was poor, they are grumbling. Celebrate. So that's uh, what I call as uh, uh, poverty. And uh, if you know you are rich, you have fear of falling, losing. And if you are already poor, there is no downside. Right? So I believe that the guys who had poverty have all the reasons to succeed. And the guys who have been rich have all the reason to lose it also. Nature is nature. So are you thankful that you failed in 50 job interviews and you could not get a single job and you came to Bombay to, uh, to the city of magic where dreams get created and recreated every moment? Are you happy? Because if you would have passed one interview of that 50, you would have been still in Coimbatore. I still passed one interview and I got a job. Fortunately, that company also was closed down. <laughs> and why I, la why I didn't get job in 50 companies, you must know the reason. Two reasons. Everybody asked, do you have an experience? Konsi college hote hain, jahan experience milti hain. It's only the degree you get. So I was just frustrated. The next one is, everybody is asking a question in English. I was in a vernacular medium. So, they were only testing the English. English is a language. It's not knowledge. I don't think any HR man understands. Everybody is testing English. <laughs> 15 years of working as an employee with the BARC, as a research scientist, one fine night, I think you love the nights because even your laboratories every night, all night, before midnight, before daylight. <laughs> so one night, 15 years back in 1995, you surprise your wife by saying that you are not going to the office the next day and you have resigned. Even in, in case of marriage, people talk first night, not the first day. <laughs> <laughs> so he has explained that concept very interestingly. 15 years back in one night, his wife and he, they were both horizontal on the bed. He told her, I have quit the job, tomorrow onwards I have resigned, I am not going to the office. She became vertical. <laughs> then she said, if you are not going to job from tomorrow, she was a banker with the SBI. She said, even I will not go to the job from tomorrow, so he got vertical. <laughs> and in one night, husband and wife couple decided that they quit the job and they plunged into business. Absolutely. And mind you, I did not plan to resign. Decision to resign was instantaneous. So he's a fantastic decision maker as an entrepreneur. So rather than discussing and then deciding, he decides and then discusses. Right? I want to tell you there are four things which are in this philosophy. I left home in 1982 without discussing with my father. If you discuss with your father, anyhow, he's not going to allow you to go to at least Mumbai from Tamil Nadu. <laughs> in 1986, I got married without discussing with my mother. <laughs> I'm sure all of you must be thinking it was a love marriage. But actually, my father-in-law loved me. He persuaded me. Only thing is, my mother's dream was she should be a fair girl. And in my village, why, why did I persuade and become a graduate? Because in that village, or in that town, nearby towns, all graduates are fair looking wise. <laughs> now I became a MSc, then I became a PhD, the color is very important for my mother. <laughs> and if I discuss, she will fail. 
So what did I do? I took her to a good studio, put bright light and took a photograph. My mother okayed it. <laughs> Only a, two days before the marriage when she came, she made a halla gulla, she couldn't stop the marriage. Third thing, I resigned without telling my wife. If you tell your wife, you never discuss with the spouse. <laughs> Had I told her, my father-in-law would have come and asked, Gade, uh, government officer garika ladiki diya, abhi kya natak hai. So I took a decision to resign without discussing with my wife. I started charging 100 rupees for thyroid testing when entire country was charging 500 rupees. This was also a decision. Had I discussed, people would have daravi fai, daravi fai, daravi fai I just took a decision. And mind you, there are only two kinds of people. One who decided and succeeded, other one who discussed and failed. Fantastic. So I think decision making, I think decision making is one of your powers. So you decide and you take the decision that it's done. You I brought, you brought the, so you are not only Dr. Velu money, you are Dr. Volume money. You believe in volumes. No, 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 you are totally wrong. I am Velu money. You split the name into two. It is value and money. <laughs> You got into the business of volumes and when the market was 700, 800 rupees a test, you started offering it at 150 rupees and you captured the market. Absolutely. So you decided instead of uh, charging the customer more, you decided to take more discounts from the vendors and pass it on to the customers. Uh, were you mathematically right in the beginning or it was a decision that you stuck to and made it right? Profits are everywhere. Pricing is just a philosophy. Profits are everywhere. Pricing is just a philosophy. The pyramid of uh, society, economically, has 10 slices. You price high, you are catering to slice 1 and 2. Price low, you are in 4, 5, 6. You have priced by mistake too low, you are in slice 7 and 8. Mind you, there is a fortune in the bottom of the pyramid not in the top of the pyramid. So I somehow, uh, today, uh, you know, I'm a philosopher now, because I'm successful. Because you're successful, yeah. <laughs> if you would have said this... Uh, Earlier. In 19, people, before 1995... People would have told I'm a crazy guy. <laughs> Fantastic. When you began your journey with only 2 lakhs in the bank account, you began your business, and you didn't have machines for your pathology. So the deal that you strike with the first doctor at Kemp's Corner in Mumbai, who gave you the machines and you gave him free tests and the balance time you did business in the open market. That was a fantastic strategy. Did you decide it on the spot after seeing the doctor or you made a plan and then met him? I think uh, the business uh, men, there are three kinds of people. One who can see what others can see. Other men cannot see what others can see. And one more man who can see what others cannot see. He only is an entrepreneur. So when I found a doctor who is doing a thyroid testing five samples a day, has a parked a machine which can do 500 samples a day. I told him, I'll get you five tests free, done for five years, you give me that machine. Who said to do business, you need money? You need stamina, you need intelligence. So I got that machine, worked on volume, that machine is busy, went and knocked one more, went and knocked one more, and a dozen machines I could get without paying. Mind you, the business overall is successful simply because I understood Wala concept that time itself. You know what is Wala concept? Normally, taxis were standing for 20 hours and running for 4 hours before Wala came in. Today, they are running for 20 hours and standing for 4 hours, right? Analyzers, testing machines were testing for one hour in a day, standing for 23 hours in a day. Today, I make machines to run 23 hours and they stand one hour for service. Mind you, sweat the asset, sweat the brain, prosperity is there. Fantastic, fantastic. In 1995, you thought, that let me take advantage of technology and the mobility of logistics, air cargo. And you started in Washi and started collecting samples from a couple of hundred cities of the country. That was a very smart move. So did that step 
help you to achieve volumes because of which you could charge low to your vendors, to your uh, partners in, in terms of pathology laboratories, hospitals, etc.? One thing I knew very clearly, reagent cost is like a broadband cost. The smaller you buy, costlier it is. Bigger band, bandwidth, cheaper per kbps. So I knew that every time when if I double the volume, I get a 10% discount. Even today it is working. So every time you double the volume, 10% discount. And let me give you what made me to work on this. Everybody was buying reagent for $3 and selling the services for $10. Fair business. Reagent $3, conversion cost $3, selling with $4 margin $10. I bought reagent for $3 and gave, rolled out my service for $2. So people were wondering, this man is fundamentally wrong. I said, why the $3 reagent cost, his services are $2. But none of them knew that if you buy 100 a month, it is $3. You buy 1,000 a month, it is two and a half dollar. Buy 10,000 a month, it is $2. Today, I buy 5 million tests a month, it is half a dollar. And that's the story. Why did you, in spite of being the cheapest in the country, in terms of pricing, not quality, you still further went ahead and reduced your prices from $1 a test to half a dollar? What was the idea behind that? Yeah, this was one evening when my daughter uh, uh, in a dinner table asked me a question, Daddy, are you rich? I said, I'm rich. Very rich, very rich. What are you going to do with the money? I said, like, uh, Bill Gates, uh, Azim Premji, I also should bluff, sorry, talk. <laughs> so I said, I will give it to the society. So my daughter asked me, are you not an idiot? Loot the patient and give it to the society. Actually, you should loot from the society and give it to the patient. I would stuck me like anything. So I didn't think, I didn't, I did think the entire night, didn't sleep, and took a decision that instead of collecting two dollars, I will collect one dollar. My investors were <laughs> quite shocked. On the boardroom, they asked me a question. You mean to say you want to do charity when we have come on the board? I told, look, profits will go up. No. Finally, I arm twisted. And after 18 months, they said, Doc, Doc you are a visionary. Because profits went up. It went up to 42%? You reduce the uh, price, the profits go up. I think this is something which is, uh, uh, one has to experience. It so the, pro the uh, profits went to 40% uh, up. And IPO got subscribed 75 times. So, so Thyrocare is a zero debt company. In 2011, you got uh, funds on board uh, as equity funding. And to exit them, you created the uh, IPO. IPO. What was the reason for you to raise the funds in 2011? And why did you exit them in 2016? There is a saying, people say, did I not had I not met that lady that day, I would have not had this child. <laughs> so was my story. Somebody came, asked for a pri uh, share. My share, I felt should, my company should be worth 200 crore. But I didn't want to sell. So I said uh, 400 crore. The guys went away. After six months, they came back. I knew that I had told the right price. So they, when they came back, I told 500 crore. They were a bit shocked. I told, do quarter acha gaya. So 400, 500 ban gaya. This time they were very angry. They didn't even ask for a coffee. They went away. After two more quarters, they again came. 600. This time they wrote a paper and pencil and told, yes, okay. That day, and I not met them, this deal would have not happened. So I diluted at 600 crore. Yeah, 25 percent. So, that is to know what is my true value. Not for anything else, number one. Number two, if you want money, you will get only 20 percent less. If you don't want money, you get 20 percent more. I got it. 